Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas I'm going to show you how to prep your miniatures. Hey everyone, Matthew from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to the second episode of this series called Anyone, Yes Anyone Can Paint Miniatures. In this series, I'm going to take you through each step of the miniature painting process, break them down to show you some simple approaches so that you can see that painting minis is a lot more simple than what you think it may be, and that it's not just for people that can paint to a really high standard, anyone really can do it. Now in the previous video of this series, I showed you what I think you need to get started in the miniature painting hobby. So if you haven't seen that one yet, go check that out. It's uh, linked in the description below. But if you have seen it, now that we know what we need, we can actually start working on our miniatures. Now the first layer of paint that we put on a miniature is the prime. But before we put that down, we need to make sure that our miniatures are clean so that the prime won't react in a funny way to it and that the mini is free from any unwanted lumps or bumps that are going to take away from the finished paint job that we end up with. And so I'm going to show you all of the things that you may end up doing before priming so that it is ready um, for that first layer of paint. So let's head down and have a look at how we might need to prep our minis. All right, so here we've got a few different minis and had a couple of different things done to them to get them ready to be primed. Now, obviously, we've got the abomination here from Zombicide Invader that's already been painted. I'll talk about that when I get to it. But before I start talking about the different things that may need to be done before you can start priming, I do just want to say that I've been painting for a bit over 18 months at the time of recording this. I lost count ages ago at how many minis I have painted, and I reckon for at least 90% of the minis that I've done, I have been able to completely skip this step the, in, in its entirety and go straight through to priming. Um, I've really only found that the minis that need really any work done to them to get them ready to be primed are the ones on the cheaper end, the lower quality end, where they're just kind of thrown into the game just to up the appearance of it a little bit. And then it kind of comes down to, is it really worth spending that extra time for a mini that isn't that high, high quality? But a, a lot of games these days, the quality is getting better and better. And a lot of our games are from like Come On or Seam On, whatever they're called these days, and Awaken Realms and companies like that that really put the time into their minis. So yeah, for the vast, vast, vast majority of minis that I paint, I can completely skip this step. So I just want to mention that so that if you're watching this and then thinking, wow, we haven't even started painting yet and we've got to do all of this work, don't worry about it. If you end up painting minis like me, you better completely completely skip this step, but you may get to a mini where you need to do some of this work and so it's good to know what you may need to do. Alright, so I'm just going to show you the most common things that you may come across so that if you need to tackle them, um, you know what to do. Alright, so probably the most likely thing that you're going to come across are mould lines. And that is on a mini like this, um, you can see um, running around the edge here um, and then down on the base, we've got these little ridges um, that are sticking up there. Um, this is part of one of the, or sorry, a result of one of the ways that minis can be made. So a miniature like this um, has been molded. And the way that that happens is the mold has two halves. And in each half, um, half of the shape of the mini has been carved out of it. So when the halves get brought together, you then end up with the complete shape of the mini. And then in this case, plastic gets injected into it. And then after it's set, the mold then gets pulled apart and you're left with the mini. But because you've got that join from the mold running all the way around, um, some of that plastic can end up squeezing out through um, the joins. And then as it sets, you then end up with these little ridges. And so if I just bring that a little bit closer, um, you can see them a little bit clearer there. So yeah, so it's just a result of, of that. Um, to get rid of these is very, very simple. Um, you just need, if I just move them off to the side, um, something along the lines of this. So this is a hobby knife. Um, as you can see, I've got the Army Painter hobby knife. Um, you don't need a miniature branded one. Um, anything that's you know, sort of similar to this will be fine. Now, there, there are 
products labeled as mold line removers. I know Citadel makes one. Um, I don't really understand the point of actually buying one. Maybe it does the job a little bit better. I don't know, but this will do the job just fine. Plus other things as well. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend just getting anything like this. Um, you can just buy these from your from your hobby store. Um, so to get rid of the mold lines, it's just a simple case of scraping them off rather than cutting them because you don't want to actually go in and, and gouge out part of the miniature. Um, so you just want to use the, the side of the blade just in a scraping motion across the top. Use your thumb to, to brace it. Um, and then maybe if I just start with this one here, it's then just a case of scraping across the top nice and carefully, going slow so that you don't, um, you know, over, over scrape it and start taking plastic out of the actual miniature. All right, work to the side a little bit as well, just to smooth it out. And then you can see in that section there, as we just bring that back into focus, so you can see where I've taken that mold line off there. So for something like this, it really does just come down to the finishing or the finish quality that you want from your mini, um, because obviously that ridge is not supposed to be there. Um, and so, you know, if you if you want your mini to look cleaner, um, it's a good idea to, to get rid of that, um, but very, very easy to skip. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind about whether you're actually going to get rid of the mold lines or not. So let's say on the base here, we will where we have that ridge running between her feet. If you were going to do some basing with this, like if you were going to stick down some rocks or something like that that's going to cover it, well, if you're not going to see it, there's no point in removing it. Um, but if you're just going to just paint the base and that ridge is going to be seen, well, then maybe you, you do want to get rid of it, but it completely comes down to the finish quality that you want. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and finish removing the mold line from all the way around, and then I'll show you how it looks at the end. All right, so there we go. So it's not absolutely perfect. A little bit more work could be done, but for the most part, all of those mold lines have been removed. Now you may have noticed there, like I said at the start, we you know try and scrape rather than cutting. There was one or two little spots where I did need to end up cutting. There was a little um, a bump just here that scraping it wasn't really working. So I then just very carefully just just sliced through, just went slowly um, and made sure that I didn't go too deep um, and that cut that off. Um, and then I was able to just then continue to scraping to, to bring it down level. Um, but yeah, so you can see, you know, down the side of the leg there, um, sort of her skirt there, um, you know, much, much smoother and those ridges aren't going to be seen as it's painted. So again, this is a step that you just need to consider for yourself as to what finish quality you're going for. Um, so this um, mini here is from Detective City of Angels, and these really are just kind of placeholder miniatures. They're not they're not meant to be high quality. And so, you know, I would have probably just jumped straight to priming these, wouldn't have worried about those mold lines at all. But for the purpose of the video, just showing you there, um, you know, and so spots down on the base there as well. Again, you know, I could probably get like a file or something like that to really be able to get in there and properly smooth it off. Um, but that's gonna look a lot, lot smoother when it's painted. So yeah, so that's probably the main thing is mold lines. Um, and again, you know, just a, a hobby knife is fine. It really does the job very well. And you just make sure you're scraping more so than, than cutting if you do need to cut. Just make sure you go nice and smooth. Um, so yeah, so let's move on to the next one and have a look at something else that you might need to do. All right, so another thing that you may come across that you need to take care of before you actually start priming is if you have parts of a miniature that should be straight, that are bent. So you can see on Darth Vader's lightsaber here, um, we've got a big kink going on it there. So it should be more like, oh, if I can grab that, um, it should be more like that, nice and straight. 
um, but yeah, it, it wants to, to bend back there. And obviously if I over bend it and then let it go, it's got the memory in it. So it wants to, to keep going back. So what we need to do to, to straighten that is we just need to heat it up just so it softens the plastic a little bit and then hold it in place for a while while it's still hot. Um, just so it sort of sets there a little bit and then put it in some really, really cold water, um, just to help it sort of freeze back up, um, you know, cool back down really, really quickly, and then it will stay in place. So for that, I've just, I boiled some, some water. And so I've got some in this container here. Um, and then here I've got just some tap water that I put some ice in, um, so that I can go straight from, so I'll hold it in the hot, then straighten it. Um, and then when I've held it there for a little while, um, and then dip it in. So I'll probably hold in the, the boiling, or, you know, the water that was boiling for maybe 15 to 20 seconds, somewhere around there. Um, then I'll hold for, I don't know, maybe a similar amount of time and then dunk into the water for around about that 15 to 20 seconds again, or just enough so that it'll hold it in place. And there we go, Fade has got himself a straight lightsaber now. Now you would have maybe noticed that as I was holding it in the hot water, I ended up just getting my hobby knife out just so that I could hold, um, just to bend the lightsaber down a little bit so that I could keep it in the hot water because um, part of his cape robe here was going in there as well and I didn't want it going in too. Um, so I just had to hold that down. Um, so yeah, that would have been maybe 10 to 15 seconds somewhere around there. Then I was able to just hold it in place and I found that once I, like, like I really held it for maybe two or three seconds, then I let it go and it was sitting there. So then I went straight into the water. This time when it went in, I just submerged as much as I needed to so that the, the lightsaber was in the water. I didn't worry about getting, you know, anywhere else wet or not. Just held it in there. That would have been a good 15 or so seconds. Um, and now that's that's nice and solid there. Um, it's, you know, gonna, gonna hold its position. So there we go. So if you need to straighten anything, boiling water, 10 to 15 seconds, hold for a couple of seconds, straight into the cold water for a good 15 seconds, and that'll that'll hold it in place. All right, so the next thing that you may need to take care of before priming is unwanted gaps. So this generally comes about sort of, it seems to be from when um, miniatures get assembled. Um, so, you know, if we come back to um, a mini like this from City of Angels, this is just one complete um, you know, bit of plastic. There is no joins or anything like that in it. It's just done as, a, as one whole mold. Um, but then with the abomination from Zombicide Invader, it's separate pieces have been molded and then stuck together. And if those pieces don't quite align absolutely perfectly, um, you can end up with little gaps. So if we see, you know, like in this section here where the arms meet the body, we've got this gap running along there and you can follow it all the way around um, to the underside there and then also running in through here. So these would have been separate pieces um, and then glued together. This came assembled, um, but yeah. So um, to take care of something like that, um, we use, th there's a bunch of different products that you can use, um, but one of them is like this stuff here. Um, green stuff, this is most commonly called. Um, some green stuff products that you'll find out there are already green and you don't need to do any mixing or anything like that. With one like this, um, we have our blue and our yellow sides. Um, so what you would do, and I'm not gonna do it obviously with this because he's already painted, um, but using your knife, you would cut a section of it off, um, both the, the blue and the yellow. Um, with that part that you cut off, you then mix it together and as it starts to mix, because it's blue and yellow, you'll you'll end up with green. Once it turns green, that's when it will then start to, um, you know, the, the two separate parts mixing together will start to react, and then over time it will start to harden. It will still be soft as it turns green though. Um, and then you just basically make it into a little log, like a snake sort of thing, um, and then you just press it into where that gap is and then using whatever tools you may need to um, you may have some sculpting tools or if i just have a look around um you know even like a rounded edge off 
like the tweezers there, um, just smooth it out and work it in so that it follows um, little crevices and the, the forms of the parts of the mini around it. So you can see there's some muscle definition and things like that. Try and want it to match there. Um, and then it is um, not water soluble. I don't think that's the, that's the right term, but you can then um, with your brush, um, just wet the bristles and then you can then use that to feather out the edges to smooth it out So you just want to get a nice smooth, um, you know transition from the green stuff onto the, the the plastic so that when you then paint it you can't see that that ridge where it meets But it will just cover up that gap. Um, I have never done that I bought this uh, this stuff a little while ago just in case um, But yeah filling gaps is something that I've never done because I find that once the mini is in the middle of the table And you know everyone's sitting around the edge those little gaps like that can't really be seen So yeah, so I I, I noticed that before painting him. I didn't worry about it though um, Because I just don't think it's really that much of an issue um, Some minis you'll find have much bigger gaps than others. These are pretty good. That's quite a neat fit um, so yeah, I just didn't really think it was worth it. But yeah, if you need to take care of a gap, um, you do something like that. And the fact that I need to show a painted mini to show you this rather than an unpainted one shows you um, how rare it is to actually find one with with gaps because I went and looked through all of my unpainted minis and I could not find one to use in this video. The only one that I could find was this dude that's already painted. So yeah, it's it's pretty uncommon to find it. But yeah, that's that's how you take care of it. Um, plenty of videos um, around on YouTube of people actually doing that. So if you wanna see someone doing it, go and find that. Um, but yeah, that's how you would take care of that. All right, now the last thing I'm gonna show you that you may need to do is something that you won't actually know whether you'll need to do it or not until you start priming, and that's if you need to clean your mini. So with a mini like this that has gone through the molding process, there may be what's called a mold release agent still on it. So if you remember when I described earlier the way that the, the molds work, that they come together, inject the plastic or whatever into it, and then pull them apart, if you were, say, you know, cooking something in a pan, you put oil down first so that what you're cooking doesn't stick to the pan. Basically the same principle here. So the mold is coated in the mold release agent first, then it goes through the molding process so that then when the mold gets pulled apart, the mini isn't going to stick to it. But that may still be on the mini because these don't get cleaned first. Um, so it's very, very simple to, to clean them, but the way that you'll know if you'll need to do it or not is because when you go to prime them, um, the prime will react in a really weird way. Um, so I've had, I've had once where I've needed to clean some minis and basically what happened is it looked like the primer was trying to run away from itself. There were big, um, like, um, like blotches kind of appeared where you could see the plastic again um, and yeah, it just went really really weird and no matter how much you know I kept priming and priming and priming it just never actually ended up staying on certain spots once I cleaned it though then it was absolutely fine it's very very easy to clean all you need is a container with a little bit of warm water and this is only warm I can hold my finger in there and keep it in there it is far from hot, just a little bit of warmth to it, and then just any sort of soap. So here, this is just a hand soap that we've just got lying around. Um, nothing special about it at all. Just a bit goes in, um, and then using a you know toothbrush or something like that, they just give it a bit of a mix up. And then it's literally just a case of just cleaning cleaning the mini, um, and then and then washing it off. Um, so this is this is very very fast to do. You can do a large number of these really really quickly. Um, but you know I've painted I don't know maybe minis from a dozen or so different games, and I've only had one game where I've needed to do this. But it wasn't until I started priming that I realized that the game has super super cheap minis in it. Very very basic. They really you know they could have been cubes, what the minis were, um, but they just put some, threw some cheap minis in there just to up the quality or, or up the appearance of it a little bit. Um, and yeah, so through the molding process. Um, 
Um, but I've had like all of the Mansions of Madness minis that I've painted, they've been molded in exactly the same way. None of them have needed um, to be cleaned. So yeah, you probably won't need to do it, but you never know. But um, yeah, you'll know once you start priming and that's how you take care of it. Okay, so there we go. Those are the four things that seem to be the most common things that you may need to do to prep your minis before priming. Um, but like I said back at the start, you know, I've been painting for a bit over 18 months now. And yeah, for well and truly at least 90% of the minis that I've ever painted, I have been able to completely skip everything that I just showed you and go straight on to priming. It really is only the, the cheaper minis um, that we find these sorts of things on, um, you know, predominantly um, that need to be done. Um, but then it comes down to whether the quality of the mini is actually high enough for you to warrant spending that time and just what sort of a finish you actually want to end up doing. If you are literally just going to be blocking in basic colors just so that they can go on the board well maybe you can just completely skip it as well um, and then just those little things that I mentioned like you know if you're going to be taking care of mold lines that are on the base if you're going to be putting some sort of basing material over the top well if you're just going to cover it completely skip it um, yeah just just things like that to keep in mind so that'll do us for this video. Hopefully that, hopefully that gives you a good idea of some of the things that you may need to do. So if you ever decide to do any of this prep stuff, you know what tools you may need um, and just some simple ways to go about it. So yep, yeah, that'll do us for, for this video. Um, the next one, we're going to move into priming. So looking at just the different ways that we can go about that. So if this series is, um, you know, has been useful for you so far and you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe so that you can keep up to date with these videos as they keep coming out um, and if you enjoyed it please do hit the like button as well um, but yeah so that'll do us so this is matt from the plastic canvas signing out happy painting everyone cheers